Hey everyone, welcome back. Today was a much, much better day in the markets than what we saw yesterday. CPI data came out, so that obviously rescued us a little bit here today. So we'll look at the markets, Bitcoin, and see what's going on there, along with Ethereum. Um, are we out of the woods? Uh, we'll see. It doesn't look like it right now, but we'll take a look at it. And then we'll look at the miners. They did much better today. Not as good as I was hoping they were going to do, considering how much Bitcoin bounced, but nonetheless, they were in the green. And then we'll look at the CPI data see how it rescued the market it was 7.7 percent better than in september which is good and we'll look at it all and then we also have hot eight sphere 3d for q3 results Sphere 3d also provided their october production update so we'll look at all that so we're going to try and get through this relatively quickly here and as always you guys know the drill i'm invested in the following coins and companies this is not financial advice for entertainment only do your own research please and if you enjoy this type of content please hit the like button subscribe helps me out tremendously Okay, let's take a look at the markets here really quick. Markets were up nicely today. S&P was up 5.54% to 3,956. Dow Jones was up 3.7% to 33,715. And the NASDAQ was up 7.49% today to 11,605. So finally, um, a little bit of a reprieve looks like in the markets based on the CPI data that came out. Bitcoin was up today. It was up... 10.46% on the day. It obviously bottomed out here at 17,000, not 17,000. The low was 15,720. We climbed to 17,553 for the close. We did have a, have a high of 18,140. We came back down a little bit uh, from that. And we are in the red right now, just a little bit. Right now, looking at the RSI, I never like these kind of huge moves either in the down direction or in the up direction it always skews the rsi data here a little bit and rsi is right now at 38 last time we were at this level was back here on the 21st of september price at that time was higher so things have reversed on us as far as bitcoin going bullish or bearish right now right now it's looking bearish uh, based on what we have right now Looking at the four hour chart also, we can see here that, you know, that RSI just went way crazy down low in the four hour chart here. Uh, yesterday we went down to a low of nine. Um, that's usually a sign of <clears throat> capitulation in the market. When we get down that low and we can see the price coming down as well with it, but we are at an RSI of 40 right now. Last time we were uh, right about here. Price was higher, price was even higher at this point. So. We're still bearish on the short term on it. And the one hour chart has climbed way back up. RSI is at 55 right now. Last time we were at this point, we were over here. Price was much higher at 19,500 roughly or above that. It was almost 20,300. So we're way, way, way down from there. Uh, it's going to take us a while to um, basically climb out of this or crawl our way out potentially. Uh, but right now, it's just not looking good on Bitcoin. I would imagine that we might be going down lower. I think there's still some fear in the markets uh, with everything that's going on with FTX. So be prepared for that if that happens. If we do go down lower, we're obviously going to be testing again. The, oh, we're at 17,500 right now. I could see us testing possibly the 6,000, 16,000 mark. And then after that, we're going back down to 15,500. So something to be mindful of. Okay, now let's take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum, pretty much the same story here today. Ethereum was up today. Let's see how much did it bounce. It bounced 17% today to a close of 1,295. We did hit a low of 1,083 and a high of uh, 1,347. Um, same thing on the RSI here on the daily. Uh, it's not looking as bad as Bitcoin is. It's 42. Last time we were over here and it looks like it's you know right a little bit under that uh, RSI right now. On it, yeah, actually, we might be above it, it looks like. So it's looking a little bit better for Ethereum right now, but we'll keep an eye on it, see what happens going forward. We got Friday tomorrow. Uh, we got the, I think, the jobs report coming out tomorrow, and then we got the weekend, and weekend is always uh, crazy anyways. Okay, let's take a look at the miners. Miners, any was up 8.11% today to 40 cents. Argo was up 27.46% to 9 cents. They had a nice bounce today. Bit Digital was up 7.22% to $1.01. Bitfarms was down 1.8%. They were up 8% in the beginning of the day, and then they continued to fall down. And that might be in anticipation for their earnings report. We'll see. Uh, but they were down to $0.69. Cents. CleanSpark was up 9.46% to $2.72. Course Scientific was up 8.71 to $0.13. Cents. Digihost was up 18.23% to $0.70. Cents. It looks like some of the smaller miners have done better than uh, some of the big boys. 
DMG was up 5.5% to 16 cents. Greenage was up 11.3% to 72 cents. Hive was up 6.55 to $2.44. Hot 8 was up 1.16% to $1.75. They posted their uh, report as well, Q3 report. We'll look at it here in a minute. Iris Energy was up 10.65 to $2.39. Lexfolio was down 43% to 0.004 cents. Marathon was up 3.85% to $9.98. Mawson was up 8.86% to $4.43. Cents. Riot was up 10.61% to $5.42. Saluna was up 8.82% to $0.85. Cents. And Stronghold <coughs> excuse me, was up 12.86% to $0.78 cents, or $0.79. Cents. So overall, pretty good day in the markets. The miners, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. Miners didn't do as well as I thought with Bitcoin going up 7%. I would have thought the miners would have been up at least, on average, over 10%, 15% up. Um, but I think there's still a lot of fear in the market. Now, let's take a look at the network hash rate. Let's refresh this. Okay, it is starting to bounce back up a little bit here. We are now at 264 million terahashes per second. We were at 259. So with the price of Bitcoin going back up to over 17,000, that is helping some of the miners. The miners are plugging those in. And this is actually uh, delayed data. This is a couple days old. So we may see a further drop here as more recent data comes in on this. Uh, but right now, it's kind of what's happening with it. Okay, so that's all the market updates. Let's take a look at the consumer price index really quick. We're not going to go too far into it. But this obviously helped us tremendously today, especially in the markets, uh, regular stock markets. And then it, I think it also helped with uh, Bitcoin as well. Had we gotten a worse reading for the CPI data, uh, it would have been a nightmare in the markets today. The, uh, Bitcoin could have easily gone down to like 14,000 if that would have happened, I think. Um, so here's the data for uh, October. And we are now at 7.7. .7. We were at 8.1 or 8.2 in uh, September. So that's come down. We've continued to come down here. The other one that's important is all items less food and energy has come down as well. There was some fear of it going up, uh, but it has come down a little bit. So that's good there as well. So we're at 7.7 .7 euro basically um, year, year over year. The only thing that's gone down here, well, food's gone down a little bit uh, to 0.6 uh, from September of 0.8. Food away from home went nicely down 0.4 from 0.7. Energy went uh, pretty much remained flat, looks like, and energy commodities went up 4.4 from negative 4.7. Fuel went up 4 from negative 4.9. Energy services went up huge, 19.8 uh, from negative 2.7, and that includes or fuel oil. Sorry, that was fuel oil. Gasoline was 4. Electricity was down 1.2 from. Yeah, I'm trying to, no, energy services was down negative 1.2. Electricity was 0.1, so that was a decrease from 0.4. Utility piped gas services was down 4.6, so that was good. And then all items less food and energy was 6.3. Biggest drops here was commodities was down 0.4. New vehicles were down also a little bit to 0.4 from 0.7. Used car trucks continued to slide down, negative uh, 2.4%. Apparel was down 0.7%. Uh, Medical was flat. Services, less energy services was down a little bit, 0.5 from 0.8. Shelter was up 0.8. So that's something we got to keep an eye on, shelters, uh, housing. Transportation services were up or down a little bit, 0.8 from 1.9. And medical care services was down 0.6. So those are all good things. So a lot of good things are happening right now. And that is uh, uh, has been affecting today's stock market and Bitcoin, uh, giving us a little bit of a reprieve in the markets. Because uh, if the data was worse, if we were in the 8.1 eight again or something like that, we would have been going way down today. So we can all thank the CPI data coming out today, rescuing us a little bit. Okay, let's take a look at Sphere 3D. They provide their uh, Bitcoin production and mining updates for October 2022. And not much change here for them. So they've re actually restructured their purchase agreement with BitFufu, which is good. Production for the month totaled 10.93 Bitcoin. Total Bitcoin holdings were 84.92 at the month end. Um, so they did add a little bit to their huddle position and sold some. And then operations achieved 114 BTC per exahash efficiency, which is okay. And the real 
part here is down here. So here's a commentary from the CEO. We continue to work with our par uh, partners to install the thousands of miners Sphere 3D has landed in recent months and are working with energy providers and contractors to energize them in the coming months. As more than 17,000 miners come online, Sphere 3D's production will increase dramatically. So that is good. 17,000 at 100 terahash. We're looking at 1.7 exahash here. There's a little bit of a discrepancy here. Uh, I wonder if this should have been uh, 12,000 miners, but we'll get into this here. Miner deliveries and petahash capacity. So our discussion with Bitfufu to renegotiate our September 21, 21, 2021 contract were successful. Under a new agreement reached in October, Bitfufu will apply the remaining portion of Sphere 3D's deposits toward the delivery of approximately 1.2 exahash of S19G Pros during 2022. So that's where I'm kind of thinking this is this might be 12,000. Um, you know, 1.2. If you have 12,000 miners, that would be at 100 terahash, that would get you to 1.2. The new agreement relieves Sphere 3D from the obligation to purchase 3.9 exahash of capacity at above market rates. It also eliminates substantial penalties due to bid foo from Sphere 3D because of the contract change. So that's all good news there. Uh, Sphere 3D continues to work with hosting partners to activate 4,026 miners landed in previous months. So that's unfortunate. Those can't get installed. Those should have been installed already by now. If they had them for a couple months. Their deployment will increase the company's production capacity by more than 400% compared to October 2022 production capacity levels. Post-activation production capacity is expected to total approximately 500 petahash. The miners were delivered to Compute North's Granbury, Texas facility. As a result of Compute North's bankruptcy, Sphere 3D is now working directly with the new owner and operator of the facility to get the company's miners energized and producing as soon as possible. So hopefully they can get this figured out and get this, um, you know, the miners plugged in. So let's take a look at what we have for them right now, and then we'll get into uh, the reports, the Q3 reports. So Sphere 3D has 63 million shares outstanding roughly. Uh, current stock price is 40 cents. Market cap is at 25 million right now. Current, peta, uh, current hash rate is going to be 100 peta hash. Future hash rate is going to be 21, uh, 2.1 exa hash. So that may include, would that include? I'm trying to think what do we have here for them. 21,000 miners, so if they're getting, they got basically 1,000 miners right now, they're getting 4,000, so more, that's 5,000, and then if they add another 17,000, that would get them to 2.1. So the 17,000 reported is actually correct, but I'm a little confused by the 1.2 exa hash on them. As far as miners being installed, they didn't install anything this month. They're, um, they only mined 10.93 BTC. They were increasing their BTC all the way up through, looks like July and August was the same, and then after that, things have coming have been coming down for the production wise and that's one of the things that i keep harping on is miners need to install more miners than the network hash rate grows otherwise you're gonna be making less and that is the case here the only way they make more is if bitcoin this is going up in price which we're not seeing that right now uh, so i've been making about two hundred fourteen thousand for the month of october right now i also have them, a, have them at a far lower efficiency i'm at um, 109 btc per exa hash I don't know where they came up with 114. Uh, I don't know if they're using the average. I'm using the actual uh, reported here. And they sold, it looks like, 4.07 Bitcoins for proceeds of close to $80,000 on that. We didn't install any miners for them. Everything stayed the same uh, in October. So there was no change there. And I didn't even check the institutions today. I've been busy doing the um, uh, data for Q3 reports. So uh, I'll make a note to myself to update this before I post it to the Patreon members. So that's where we are right now. And with them, let me see here. I'll oh, see, I almost forgot, uh, even forgot to do this. So let's do this now. Let's see how close I came into what they reported. So we're on Q3 accounts. Let's take a look at their actual self-mining. Digital mining revenue was 787,000. What did I have here? Uh, I was a little bit short. So $787,000, I was a little bit under that. And let's put that in here. And I was off by 3%. It's harder with this, these little guys, especially with them being at 100 pet hash. A uh, couple thousand difference makes a big difference on it. So let's update our numbers here. What we know is the actual amounts. And let's see here. That's not it. Let's do this. I want to have the dollar sign in there. So let's put in the seven eight seven one two three. Okay, that makes more sense. And let's update our numbers here really quick while we're at it. So, current quarter 
revenue, we have it as, why do we have two numbers in here? That shouldn't be the case. Something got messed up. So current quarter is this one. We're looking at 576,000 currently. Last three quarters, let's update this now, along with this one here. So now we're using the last three quarters for it. So total combined revenue po potential for them is gonna be 3.27 million for the year if they stay where they are. Obviously they're supposed to get some miners installed. If that does happen, that's gonna help them with their uh, revenue here in the last quarter of uh, Q4. Now they are gonna be going to about 2.1 exahash, so they have pretty good growth ahead of them, being at 100 petahash. I uh, have them at a PE of 15 if that happens with a 50% net income from gross revenue. We're looking at a stock price of 39. That's kind of where they are right now, it's 40 cents. So they're pretty well valued on that. If we use the 75% net income, we're looking at 58 cents. And that should increase as their revenues actually increase. Um, they have been getting this kind of higher PE ratio than the other miners is because of the expected growth from 100 petahash to 2.1 exahash. That's, well, originally it was six exahash, but that got uh, uh, knocked down. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Now let's take a look at their numbers. Um, let me see here. Okay, some statistics here. So cost, uh, let's, actually let's take a look at this. BTC mined per exahash for the quarter is 377. So it did increase a little bit here in Q3. Uh, Q2 was 370. Cost to mine one BTC with all costs included was 310,000. Cost to mine one BTC minus depreciation and whatever else stuff we could put in there was 14,650. So that is a nice decrease there. So we're seeing decreases in costs associated with mining Bitcoin. And that's a good thing. We're also seeing it on the other one. Debt to equity is uh, 0.234, which is great. Current ratio is 15. That's also great. That has increased. It's gotten better. Uh, debt to equity has gone up just a little bit, uh, not much. So no concern there. Revenue, we know about the revenue combined was 1.3 million. General and administrative expenses was 3 million something that is a lot if we look at the percentage of that that's 226 percent of the revenue is generally administrative they're way over they got to get that under control get more miners installed that should help them out cash and cash equivalents is 54 million compared to 10 so a nice increase there um what else do we have in increase here notes receivable to 1.8 that's good other current assets down to 22 from 37 million in the q2 total current assets increased to 78 so that's a good sign there Total assets also increased as well, so that's good. Liabilities, liabilities don't, uh, let me see here. Nothing drastic in here uh, that I can see right now. Total liabilities is 6.2 million. Current liabilities is 5.2, so pretty good low debt there. Total stakeholder equity, you can see it here. Total revenue was 1.3 million, and that included their services and product revenue of 569,000. Expenses, here's where we're going to look at the cost of digital mining revenue was 553, so it's down from Q2 from 619, so that's good. Cost of services, don't care. Sales and marketing, why do they have sales and marketing? Maybe for their um, services and product revenue. General and, administ and administrative has come down from 15 million in Q1 to 7 million in Q2 to 2.9 million, so that's good. Um, depreciation and amortization stayed pretty close to what it was in Q2. Impairment, let's see what else here. Total loss was 10 million compared to 15, so that is a good sign as well that it's going down that way. Gross profit minus depreciation percentage was 29%, uh, so that's not good. And it was 48.89. We know that Bitcoin price was up higher during Q2 a little bit in the beginning and then fell down, so that helped. Um, and Bitcoin has been down here in Q3, so that's the reason for that, I think. Let's see what else do we have here. That is it. That's interesting on their numbers. Um, it's good to see certain things coming down. Um, one being the, where is it? Where is it? Um, oh, I just, current liabilities, where did it go? Total revenues, net loss, I just saw it. Oh, general and administrative is the one I was looking at. So that went down almost five almost 5 million, which is good. We wanna see that continue to go down until they're possibly growing. Uh, but right now they're so small with 100 petahash, they really just need to get those miners installed, go from there. So 
any kind of positive that we can find on here is a good thing. All right. So that is it. Hopefully they can get this stuff all plugged in and working for them. All right. Let's take a look at HUT8 as well while we're at it. And let me see here. HUT8 is here. So HUT8 reports strong quarterly revenue of 31.7 million. Bitcoin holdings increased 13.3% in Q3 to 8,388. As of September 30th, achieved adjusted beta of 2.1 million, which is good. Now let's take a look at their numbers for them. And we're just going to go through it here. HUT8. Okay. So first we'll start up on top. I updated my numbers here. I was really close. I was within 0.43% of the self Bitcoin mining revenue, which I had met 27.3 Canadian uh, million dollars. They reported 27.268. So pretty close to that. I was off by 0.43 on the upside. So happy about that. And there. Oh, now we're using the latest quarter that we're in for the numbers for Q4 here. And then we're using the last three quarters, which are all of these here numbers for um, actually these over here for dollars wise. Okay, so that is being calculated into here. Combined total is 108 million for the four quarters potentially. Third, the fourth quarter is still um, variable. Uh, it's gonna change for us, especially for November and December, depending on where Bitcoin price goes and if they get any more miners installed. So if we're looking at 50% net income from gross revenue with a PE of 15, it's $4.15. Stock is now at $1.75. Undervalued, in my opinion, same thing if we use 75% net income, $6.22 and a PE of 15. Really need to see, I've been saying this before and I'll say it again, we really need to see them growing. Their hash rate right now is a good opportunity to buy some of the miners that are out there in the markets at a really, really low price. Okay, so Q3 numbers. BTC mine was 982, nice increase here from 946. Starting hash rate was 2.7 exahash, ending hash rate was 3.07 exahash, average hash rate was 2.925. Hash rate increase was on the lower side, 290 petahash compared to 336 and 353 for the prior quarters. BTC mined per average hash rate was, exahash was 415 in Q1, 362 in Q2 and Q3, we're seeing 335. Even though their hash rate has increased, it has not kept up with the network hash rate increase. Therefore, they're generating less. That's always going to be the case. Um, see, cost of mining BTC was $46,000 with everything included. Cost of one, to mine one BTC minus depreciation and whatever else I could pull out of there was 20000 I think it's still pretty high. I think they have quite a bit of stuff included in there. Um, I, don't know, I can show you this here. Let's see here. I think this was it. Yep. And it's, uh, let's see here. Is that hut eight? Make sure I got the right one. It hut eight. Big as can be, and I missed it. Okay. So if we scroll down to, let's see, was it section 14? I think it was cost of revenue. So in the cost of revenue, the only thing that they're providing in there is site operating costs and depreciation. Um, so I've taken out depreciation best as I could out of there, but Unfortunately, they're including other things in there as well in the site operation costs, which could be salaries, other things, uh, other expenses. It would have been nice to just get a electrical cost in there, uh, but we don't have it. I looked through the filing here. I couldn't find anything as far as what they're paying per electricity. On average, at least, even if they provided that, nothing. I couldn't find it. If you guys know it, that would be great, but that's what we're looking at with right now. Um, so, yeah, we're looking at about 20000 to mine a single Bitcoin with everything that's included in there. Uh, debt to equity is 1.357, so that did increase a little bit here from Q2, and current ratio is at 9.56, so that has actually went down a little bit. Um, so that would mean that they're using up a lot more cash, okay? Revenue was 31.6 million, general administrative compensation was 11.2 million, so that's 35% of their revenue was spent on general administrative compensation. Uh, it's actually increased here. It's been increasing here. And I think the reason for that is, well, they're generating less revenue. Bitcoin's coming down in price. They're not installing as fast as the network cash rate has been increasing, leading to lower revenues. That in turn is leading to higher percentages for general administrative compensation. Okay. Current assets, cash and cash equivalents, uh, 33 million. They had 60 million, 78 million. So they're burning through cash. Uh, accounts receivable is 
that's been coming down as well. Digital assets has been, well, went up a little bit here in Q3, 223 million compared to 288 in Q2 and Q1 was 367. Bitcoin at that point was a uh, uh, way higher in price. Deposits prepaid is up, so that's good as well. Total current assets, 265 million. That is an increase from Q2, but still a decrease from Q3. So total assets is 561. That's actually down from Q2 and down from Q1 as well. Current liabilities has increased a little bit to 27 million. To total liabilities is to 67 million. Up a little bit here from Q2, and but down from Q1. So that's that part is at least good there. Uh, what else do we have here? Revenue. So revenue has been decreasing each quarter. We were at 53 for Q1, 43 million in Q2, and 31 million in Q3. Now, I forgot to mention, all these numbers are in Canadian uh, dollars. Self-mining has been coming down as well. 49 million in Q1, 39 in Q2, 27 in Q3. That's not good. We know Bitcoin prices have been coming down, but they just have not kept up with the network increases. Bitcoin is coming down in price, so it's just a downward spiral for them right now. <clears throat> High-performance computing is down a little bit to 4.4 million from 4.7. They did not provide too much details on this either. Wanted, I was hoping they would provide some more um, number of customers that they have that are using it, what are they using it for, things like that. That would be kind of nice to see on that site. Site operation cost was 20,000, uh, depreciation 20 or 20 million, depreciation was 25 million, and cost of revenue was 45 million. And what else do we have here? Selling and administrative was 11 million, so that's down a little bit from Q2 and Q1, so that's good. Um, that's a good thing there. Total operating expense was 25 million, that's way up here from 16 million, it looks like. Do I have this right? Uh, make sure, yep. So. That's not good. Net income before tax, negative 31 million. Net loss, let's see if I have this right. Yep. Net loss was negative 23 million. So that's a little bit better than what it was in Q2 of 88 million. Total comprehensive income was negative 23 million compared to 186. So that is at least uh, a good sign there. And number of shares diluted. So we had 178 million in Q2, 194 million in Q3. That is an increase of what, 16 million shares added during the quarter there. We only had 8 million added in Q2 from Q1. So there you have it. There's all the numbers for us, uh, for them. I think once Bitcoin starts going back up, they're gonna be okay. They still have plenty of cash, so I, I'm not worried about them that way. The, my only concern has been and will be until they actually start providing that they're growing their numbers um, for hash rate, increasing buying miners, things like that. That's my biggest concern, um, that they might miss the great opportunity that's currently available to them. But if they don't have the facilities to put it into, it doesn't really make a difference. So they really need to build out the facilities as well and or buy facilities too. If they can buy them on the cheap right now, that'd be a great way to go. So um, I wanna see growth. That's it, let me know what you guys think. Obviously Hut8 and Sphere are in a different leagues right now based on hash rate. But let me know what you guys thought of Sphere and Hut 8 and anything else you guys had a thoughts on or comments or anything like that. Okay. Spreadsheet is going to be available to my Patreon members as always. Thank you everyone there for their continued support. Thank you all for watching. Love you all. Have a great night. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.